Hello, friends. I'm Kathy Fay, Executive Director of the Boston Early Music Festival, or BEMF, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this very special pre-concert talk preparatory to our upcoming concert by the magnificent Bach Collegium Japan, taking place on Friday, February 10th at 8 p.m. in the exquisite St. Paul Church in Harvard Square, Cambridge, Massachusetts. It is my honor to introduce our two guests, Christoph Wolf, world respected for his numerous books and scholarship on the music, life and period of Johann Sebastian Bach, Emeritus Professor of Harvard University and member of the Corporation of the Boston Early Music Festival. And Masaki Suzuki, organist, harpsichordist, conductor and founder and music director of the Bach Collegium Japan. Welcome, Christoph and Masaki. Thank you. Maestro Thank you. Suzuki, our upcoming presentation of the Bach Collegium Japan represents the third appearance on the BEM concert stage with mm. prior appearance, appearances in April of 2003 and March of 2006. We're long overdue for this return engagement and we're thrilled to be a participating presenter in your eighth North American tour, this time with celebrated British baritone Roderick Williams. Before we hear a bit more about the program you've prepared for us, featuring solo cantatas and instrumental works by Telemann, Janich, and Bach. Let me remind all that tickets are still available for this performance by Bach Collegium Japan. They can be purchased online by visiting the BEMF website at BEMF.org or by calling the BEMF office at 617-661-1812. For those unwilling or unable to attend our in-person performance on February 10th, virtual tickets are on sale as well. Our virtual presentation premieres on Friday, February 24th, and will be available for a two week period from February 24th through March 11th. So with that, I will now disappear from the screen and turn the discussion over to the two of you. My thanks again, Christoph and Masaki. Thank you. Masaki, it's so good to see you again. Uh, we are on different continents. I'm in Freiburg and you are in uh, um, Kansas City, uh, yeah. but uh, I'll be traveling back to Cambridge, Mass uh, next week. So I'll be at the concert and I look very much forward uh, to uh, hearing the Bach Collegium Japan again. Um, uh, let me ask you about uh, the program. Uh, you are focusing on the two leading composers of the German Baroque. No question that you chose Bach because uh, you know he's your, uh, your patron uh, of the uh, Collegium. Uh, but Tillemann, uh, a good friend of Bach's, uh, is also uh, you know, a central aspect of uh, your program. And you know, the two framing pieces are by Bach and the centerpieces by Tillemann. Uh, I uh, just thought, uh, how did you compose the program? Uh, with what uh, aspects uh, 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 did you have in mind? Yeah, well, this kind of uh, tour with a smaller chamber ensemble uh, uh, doesn't happen so often with us. And, uh, well, usually we are performing with the orchestra, some small orchestra and choir and for cantatas, whatever. So, yeah. uh, well, nearly only in the States we are making this kind of chamber music tour. And, uh, uh, well, this time... Uh, the, we are very happy to have uh, uh, Rod Roderick Williams from Britain, who, uh, whom uh, we have worked uh, quite some time together and to make some CDs and for performances and so on. So he is a very one of the best uh, old friends of mine. And uh, uh, well, and uh, well, I want him, of course, to sing couple of Bach solo. Uh, cantatas, but actually, uh, uh, apart from this uh, 82, the Habegenuk, uh, uh, there are a couple of other uh, uh, solo cantatas as well, but uh, the 
within this uh, uh, setting, you know, this uh, is very difficult to take up other things. So the I decided immediately to have this concert at the very end as a kind of central piece in our program. And to combine with that, the, I asked him to choose one uh, good Telemann uh, concert because the Telemann is a very important figure and his, uh, the Bach had so much contact with him, but uh, I have actually personally so uh, little opportunities, you know, so uh, uh, rarely performed in, around me. So that's why I uh, wanted to do something with Telemann. <clears throat> so um, so uh, I asked him to choose one cantata, and he has chosen uh, very uh, good cantatas, uh, the... Uh, in this cantata called um, the, uh, in the, the uh, ex express the Jesus Christ is quite personal sentiment uh, after the uh, Ulberg uh, olive mountain of olive, and uh, which is very suitable for this time of the of, of the church year, and that that is. Uh, uh, they are old um, Erber Zagen Jesus. That is uh, very, very appropriate for this uh, season. And uh, so I wanted to put this day at the end of the first half. And uh, well, uh, otherwise, we have some strings, some wind instruments, and uh, I've looked for something very good to combine with this cantata. <laughs> And uh, but I could. It was so hard to find good things because there are plenty of three sonatas or the concerto and so on and so on. But uh, the none of them uh, is really appropriate before this cantata. So I was advised to uh, see the Janic uh, the quartet. That is really interesting. I, I have never performed before, but uh, the Janic has a wonderful composer and he has uh, left uh, plenty of uh, trios and cut the uh, quartet and so on. But one of them has uh, composed, has been composed together with the choral melody of O Hauptfall Bunden und Blut. And uh, that is a really fabulous combination, I thought. So that's why uh, to put uh, this quartet right before the Telemann's cantata, starting with the, the well, quite usual overture of the number two of Bach, and the uh, and the second half, uh, I have put the one of the best pieces of the uh, Telemann is the uh, quartet, the Paris Paris quartet. So in this way, the, this co program was composed, you know, the firstly uh, Bach, starting with the Bach, and then Janic, Telemann, the intermission, and then uh, again Telemann and Bach. So I hope <laughs> you enjoyed <laughs> You will enjoy well, it. You know, I think this is an exceptionally well-designed uh, uh, program. The Telemann piece is, is actually a passion cantata, Exactly. Uh, uh, which which uh, refers to one of the stories, uh, you know, in the uh, uh, in the gospel uh, uh, reporting on uh, uh, Jesus at Mount Olives, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, the uh, Bach piece, uh, you know, fits liturgically just as well because it's for the purification of Mary, uh, the feast which uh, takes place on the second of February. So uh, uh, that's actually uh, uh, yesterday. So uh, we are close uh, to yes. the liturgical uh, uh, frame, and uh, you know the uh, uh, the story uh, in in the uh, purification cantata is that of uh, old Simeon who is holding the Christ child in his arms and uh, uh, now feels ready to die because he has. Uh, uh, held the savior in his uh, uh, hands. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, uh, you know, the contents of the two vocal pieces are uh, uh, extremely uh, useful for the time uh, in which uh, they are performed, uh, uh, you know, this uh, spring. And the Janic piece uh, fits well too, because uh, uh, you know, of the um, um, melody of the Passion Chorale, or mm -hmm. Hop for Blut und Wunden, which is used by Bach and many others uh, 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 at this uh, 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 time of the liturgical uh, uh, year. Uh, but I think Janic uh, 
uh, is a composer most of uh, uh, you know the listeners will never have heard the name no. uh, but uh, you know he is an extraordinary uh, uh, composer I'm particularly glad uh, to uh, 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 hear this uh, uh, piece because uh, Janic, uh, 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 the uh, the works that he had composed were um, completely lost uh, for many decades, and uh, only uh, uh, when I traveled to uh, um, Ukraine in uh, uh, 1999 with uh, a small uh, group of people from the Harvard Ukrainian Research Institute, uh, we located for the first time, the Singh Academy archive, and they contain most of the pieces of uh, uh, um, Janic. And uh, uh, this is one of them. And if you look at the uh, uh, manuscript of the piece, it also uh, uh, says, in memoria fili carissimi eo die definite, which means in memory of my dearest son on that particular day. So, uh, you know, he apparently composed uh, the sonata on mm. the day his uh, uh, beloved son uh, died. And he uses the, the passion chorale melody in the middle movement mm -hmm. uh, uh, in order to, uh, you know, express his uh, feelings about this particularly uh, sad experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a wonderful thing to have uh, 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 Janic on the program. He is a contemporary of Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, yeah. and uh, they were together uh, as musicians in the Prussian Portkapelle for uh, uh, about 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Janic was a double bass player and uh, uh, CPE Bach was the harpsichordist. So, yes. uh, you know, it represents the style of the younger generation mm -hmm. in, in this program, but it, it fits exceptionally well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's very nice. So we had uh, uh, two days of rehearsal and also the one concert yesterday, the day before, uh, in New Haven. And we all felt they, this piece is really suitable for the Telemann cantatas. And also the Janic style is a, a kind of uh, the... A, uh, kind of, um, how do you call it? A little later style than Bach. And so, of yes. course, yeah. And uh, but this piece has extremely concentration and uh, uh, um, well, yeah, um, and also intensity in the sound making. So just like a, a, a tiny bit of the similar are uh, the uh, the trio of the musical issue of falling and. Uh, <clears throat> And that is very, very interesting. And especially for this, uh, the third movement uh, appears this chorale, uh, oh, perhaps for uh, Blue to Wunden. And this uh, is this chorale melody is to be performed by oboes. So mm -hmm. And while the violin and the viola have the wonderful uh, ornaments or kind of obligato parts underneath. And uh, that is a really, really beautiful. And everything is based on the, well, very uh, slowly based, uh, the paced, uh, the basso continuo, wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. So everything is, a, the, the every parts have a completely different idea and the still, so the, that is very well integrated, everything. This is a really moving. <clears throat> That's a wonderful piece, I think. Yeah, it's very expressive in in basically all movements. But uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the slow movement with the chorale is uh, uh, yeah. particularly attractive uh, with its uh, expressive uh, figuration and also the contrapuntal texture yeah, uh, exactly. that is used. It's like a you know a, a chorale elaboration uh, for organ trans. Uh, cried for uh, uh, you know an instrumental ensemble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is really true. And uh, well, what I uh, extremely interesting 
is uh, I found it very interesting that the, for example, in the last movement, which is a vivace, uh, but oboe and the violin and the viola and basso continuo have uh, uh, at the very beginning, from the very beginning, three completely different theme uh, appearing at the same time. And yeah. it's so exciting that the la ring pam pam and the viola comes in ta ta yeah. <laughs> dramatic and the, the the viola solo itself is already quite rare but still you know that the musically that is so well composed that's amazing piece it's amazing piece and also i think uh, you know the other pieces that have come down to us now and are available uh, mm. uh, some of them are now uh, being published. Some have been published already. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. will uh, really add a new name uh, to the uh, um, you know scheme of uh, uh, German mid 18th century composers who have been very influential and also uh, are representative of the Berlin School, uh, mm. uh, which uh, formed under uh, you know King Frederick the uh, uh, II of Prussia. And, uh, you know, Graun was uh, Johann Gottlieb Graun and Johann Heinrich Graun, the two brothers who were the leading uh, uh, figures there. But uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, at the time in the 1740s, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, Bach traveled to uh, uh, Berlin in order to uh, perform at the uh, uh, court of Frederick, yeah. uh, you know, this was the uh, probably best ensemble uh, uh, that you could find in Germany at the time. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be, yeah, that's you know, with Quanz as the flautist and, uh, yeah. uh, you know, quite a number of uh, really uh, big name uh, yeah. uh, uh, musicians uh, on, uh, uh, you know, on the payroll. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is very, very interesting. Yeah, and the uh, music is uh, becoming slightly modern style, and uh, that is uh, changing in the, the changing process. I think that is uh, very interesting. So, right, it... you know, it was composed. Uh, we don't have a year for for the piece, but it must have been in the in the seventeen thirties or uh, at the early forties, uh, at the very latest. So it fits in chronologically. Uh, extremely well because the uh, oldest piece on the program is the Bach uh, uh, cantata of 1727, yeah, exactly. and, and, and and the youngest piece is the Telemann of 1741. So it's a span of uh, uh, 15 years uh, 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 that shows an enormously rich spectrum of uh, musical styles and. Uh, the giving and taking of uh, ideas of uh, some major figures because, you know, Bach uh, learned from Telemann and Telemann picked up things from Bach. Yeah, yeah, certainly, yeah. So the yeah, through this program, we are feeling that uh, how how close uh, the Telemann and the Bach uh, have, have been, actually. Each other, so they, they had quite much influence each other, I think. That's very nice, yeah. Yeah, we know what Bach performed by Telemann. We unfortunately do not know what Telemann performed of Bach's pieces. So, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's, we are much better informed of uh, uh, Bach's musical library and his programs. We know what what he performed uh, of uh, uh, Handel works, uh, mm -hmm. but we don't know uh, whether Handel ever performed a Bach piece. So, uh, you know. <laughs> Bach was probably more eager to accept from the other composers and a lot yeah. of music and um, other countries. And yeah, I think he he was uh, 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 absolutely uh, uh, curious to yes. know uh, what was being written at the time and also what had been written in the past. So he uh, he had a music library uh, that uh, was uh, remarkable in in scope. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. That is a really interesting. So, uh, yeah, Bach is uh, the, nowadays Bach is much more in, uh, important, or the in, in our musical life, Bach is important or well, more known. Uh, but actually, Telemann uh, and uh, all other contemporaries are so much interesting, and also Bach uh, uh, had been has been very very eager to connect the musically that, that this kind of connection all the time. So yeah. that's a, 
very interesting. So Bach has, might have been more flexible figure than others to, you know, in yeah, terms of... I mean, you, you can tell, you know, you are performing uh, uh, one of the uh, 12 Paris quartets by uh, uh, Telemann. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Telemann traveled to, uh, to Paris uh, and spent about a year in mm. Paris in 1737, 38. Yeah. Um, and he published... Uh, uh, the sonatas mm -hmm. uh, in in Paris, and uh, Bach was uh, one of the subscribers. So yeah, we can yeah, read yeah. his names on the yeah. list of subscribers. So he was supporting his uh, yeah. his uh, 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 friends' publishing uh, uh, ventures, uh, yeah. but he also probably, and I think I would say likely, performed uh, the quartets in his uh, Leipzig Collegio Musicum series. I see, I see, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but... And you can also see that uh, uh, Telemann is uh, much more daring uh, in terms of uh, coming up with new uh, uh, types of sonata structures and, and movements uh, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, have these uh, um, uh, features uh, which are uh, close uh, to the gallantry uh, uh, um, uh, style of the day. Uh, uh, if you, I think the uh, the if I read the program, vivement is one of the movement titles, or tendrement and mm -hmm. beat uh, uh, gamement. Uh, so uh, uh, it's uh, 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 very different from simply using adagio andante and and. Uh, 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 Allegro. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he he wants to bring out uh, uh, the character, uh, yeah. the different characters of the the pieces. Bach wouldn't do that, uh, so he is more conservative in that respect. Yeah, yeah. And also in this uh, the quartet, so the, the the violoncello or gamba uh, and taken up the not as a continuous instrument instead of just a completely solo instrument. So actually quartet means a traverso and violin and a viola da gamba or cello. In this case, we are going to play yeah. with the cello. But these three uh, solo instruments plus continual parts. So uh, <clears throat> again, this is just like uh, Janic, the kind of quartet. So four, four parts are completely, yeah. yeah. And uh, in between the sea, uh, there are now we're going to uh, prelude and come now one, two, three, uh, game or uh, five, six, seven, uh, I think, movements. And uh, uh, the every, every movement has a completely different idea, tempo-wise yeah. and atmosphere-wise. And also, the once we start uh, the, some kind of main theme or main idea, in between, there's always interrupted with other, other yeah, yeah. idea, suddenly, and unexpectedly. That, that is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fascinating. I mean, the degree of innovation yeah. uh, Tillemann comes up with, uh, you know, in the late 1730s is, yeah. uh, is amazing. And... Uh, uh, I'm sure that Bach was fascinated by, uh, uh, you know, these pieces uh, uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So Bach, uh, so my, my Bach have also performed these uh, quartets in the, his uh, cafe concert, uh, cafe uh, concert or something. Like sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. In his in his Collegio Musicum series uh, yeah. um, at at the Zimmermann Coffee House. Uh, uh, which, uh, uh, of course, is, is not a Starbucks outfit, but, uh, uh, you know, a fancy hotel. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So coffee was an expensive commodity uh, uh, at the time. And, uh, you know, this uh, was a distinguished audience that attended these uh, uh, concerts. And, you know, Bach came up with rather fancy programs. And I think the... Uh, a B minor suite also was uh, yeah. uh, uh, written for the Collegium uh, uh, concerts in seventeen around seventeen thirty eight, um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's innovative in a different way uh, mm -hmm. because he uh, he combines the concept of a dance suite 
uh, with uh, uh, you know uh, uh, concerto-like features of of a solo instrument. Uh, in this case, the transverse flute. Yeah, yeah. And also, I always think that the this overture style is so important for Bach uh, because he has used also this style for the cantata as well. And sometimes uh, he has combined this overture together with the choir, and that yeah. is really fascinating uh, the innovation and. The <clears throat> So I think uh, the and th this is very uh, the very often performed, but uh, the still that stays always the one of the most uh, the fascinating uh, Bach's instrumental repertory. So I'm very happy to play to start. It's with. It's, it's it's true. I mean, it's played very often, but uh, 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 not necessarily often well. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, 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 I think you will be presenting, uh, you know, an exemplary performance of this uh, uh, piece. What I always look forward to is the saraband of the piece, yeah. uh, which, uh, you know, is uh, a, a canon between canon, the top yeah. voice and, and the bass. And, uh, uh, you know, the canon is noticeable if you read the piece, but it doesn't make this an artificial piece. It really is very elegantly put together uh, you don't uh, get a feel for its sophistication because it sounds uh, uh, so naturally uh, and uh, uh, you know this is extraordinary and it's uh, one of uh, you know Bach's achievements to make a piece sound easy although uh, uh, the complexity is uh, in the structure yeah, yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, we have performed this watch many times, and but once you get to the uh, good flute player, you know, it is nothing so difficult to rehearse because we all know the music very well. But only that movement of Saraband, we always take so much time to rehearse because yeah. it is so complicated. And I always want, uh, want to, 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 to show this canon, but, I, but actually, this canon is a kind of hidden or embedded in the, the uh, much bigger picture of the, the you know, so, and that it is so difficult in a way to show only that line, but yeah. if you uh, once relax to listen to this music relaxedly, and then yeah. you can enjoy a whole beautiful sound. That's a, that's a really interesting way of to how how, how he he has hidden this kind of uh, high technique, uh, the intelligence and behind the beautiful sound. Yeah. Well, I think it may be time to uh, uh, wrap our conversation up. Really? Uh, you know, I I think the program, as you uh, devised it, uh, is uh, offering some of the finest pieces uh, written, you know, in the uh, 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 second decade of the uh, 18th century and uh, uh, featuring uh, the two most distinguished composers, uh, Telemann, uh, and uh, Bach, who were good friends uh, and uh, uh, colleagues, and then uh, the young guy, Janic, uh, uh, who uh, uh, really is living up to the standards set by, you know, the older generation. It's, it's mm -hmm. fantastic. So I look forward to uh, um, a very exciting concert, and thank you very much for uh, this conversation. Yeah, thank you very much. We are also very, very happy to come back to Boston. Uh, and, uh, well, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you, to seeing you. That's, uh... Well, I can't wait. Yeah. Thank you okay. very much.